Hi, what's up everybody? It's Steph from Steph Lee Films. With the circuit breaker in Singapore ending in about two weeks time, hopefully, fingers crossed, we are about to resume our normal way of life in a not so normal way. I believe that during this circuit breaker, a lot of new videographers would have learned a few lessons on wedding videography, either on YouTube or some free online courses. For myself, I've been doing weddings for about 12 years now and this job has brought me to places like Iceland, New Zealand, Norway, and many more. Doing what I love most, creating memories along the way. So in this video, I will talk about the top 10 tips to create cinematic wedding videos and hopefully you can learn a thing or two. So let's dive right into it. Tip number one, own the essential gear for shooting a wedding. There are five main pieces of camera equipment that I consider essential to shooting a wedding. The camera body, camera lenses, microphone, a monopod, and a stabilizer. For myself and my team, we use the Micro Four Thirds system for our videography and specifically the Panasonic GH5. And I believe you have seen in our videos how much we love this camera. The reasons? It shoots at 4K 60 frames per second so it gives you that smooth, natural, slow motion movements that our cinematography is famous for. It has a 5-axis IBIS which is the in-body image stabilization, allowing you to have that steady footage even when you handhold your camera. Another feature that we love about the GH5 is that it comes with dual SD card slots. When you shoot at 4K, a 256GB SD card can shoot for about 2 hours plus and having two cards inside the camera will ensure that you will not run out of this space so soon. And when card 1 is full, it automatically switches to card 2 to continue writing so you don't have to worry about the recording stopping due to a lack of this space. However, since this video is not about the Panasonic GH5 in detail, I will talk more about the other wonderful features in another video. I typically carry 4 lenses during a wedding shoot, the Panasonic Lumix 12-35mm f2.8 Mark II, the Panasonic Lumix 35-100mm, my favourite prime lens, the Panasonic Leica 42.5mm f1.2 for nailing any low light situation. The last lens I carry is the Panasonic Lumix G30mm f2.8 macro lens for those close up wedding details like the wedding rings and the wedding gown. I use the Rode VideoMic Pro to improve the sound quality of my GH5 and capture nice professional ambient sounds or when recording on the go dialogues between the groomsmen and the bridesmaids and also of course between the groom and the bride. The stabilizer I use is the Feiyu Tech 1000 3 axis handheld gimbal stabilizer for the smooth panning shots as well as the couples march in during the banquet. Now this is another reason why we use the Micro Four Thirds system. The lighter your camera and the lighter your gimbal, the less weight you hold in your hands. I mean, come on, we're talking about 10 to 12 hours in a typical wedding day. A 1DX Mark III with lens on the Ronin S is almost 4kg versus a GH5 on a smaller gimbal like the Feiyu Tech A1000 weighs less than 2kg. That's half the weight and I tell you that makes a hell of a difference on a full wedding day. The monopod I use is the Manfrotto MVMX Pro 500 US but basically any monopod with the extended legs is what I recommend. Especially when you are taking the banquet fillers, those panning shots or during the vows when you need something to rest on and keep the footage as steady as possible. Tip number 2. Plan ahead. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Talk to your clients beforehand on specific things they want during the big day. Some of the couples will want you to be there all the time. Some of you want to be invisible and doing a journalistic style. If possible, also talk to their family members to find out if there are any family traditions that you have to take note of on the big day itself. One important thing to note is working with photographers. When you arrive, introduce yourself to the photographer no matter how big or famous you are. Be a pleasure to work with because ultimately, both of you just want to create the best pictures and videos for the same person which is your clients. Tip number three, choose the right focal length for the right situation. When you are shooting the vows, you want to have a tighter crop to create that personal close-up emotional feel of a wedding vow. And during a march in down the aisle, you probably want to switch to a wide angle lens for that grand entrance feel capturing the audience reactions and poppers of flowers being thrown to celebrate the entrance of the wedding couple. Tip number four, create depth in your shots. This means taking note of the foreground, the background, subject, creating layers as you film different scenes during the different times of the day. You can also use the basic compositional rules like leading lines and rule of thirds to create that beautiful overall picture. Tip number five, capture the details. Here we are talking about the staple of almost every wedding. 
flowers, cakes, wedding venues, the bridal gown, the couple's engagement rings, the groom's outfit, lights, decorations, the bridesmaids, the groomsmen's relatives, and so many more. These details add mood and make up the overall feel of your wedding video, so make sure to show up earlier so you can have time to shoot whatever you need to shoot without people walking into your shot. Tip number six, lighting. As we all know, weddings can start as early as 5 a.m., where the bride starts to get ready for makeup, which usually takes about two hours. During the day, you don't need any external lights at all, as the midday sun is bright enough. You probably even need to have ND filters to be able to continue shooting at lower f-stops to create that bokeh effect. Most dinner banquets are dimly lit to create that romantic and intimate feel, which means that your cameras will struggle if there's insufficient light, often resulting in noisy footage due to the higher ISO. Make sure to bring your own light so that in situations like this, you are fully prepared. Also be aware of the spotlight during the march in. This can throw a spanner in the works if you are not well prepared for it. Tip number seven, know your timetable well. I cannot stress how important this point is. It may seem fundamental, but many times when I first started out, I've almost missed so many important moments during the day that I started to keep a timetable of the wedding day, the schedule of events and the full itinerary. That includes the couple's addresses, the time of their solemnization, the wedding venue, and what time is their first march in, etc. Weddings are full of one-take-only moments, and if you missed it, and you're as good as dead. In all my years of experience, the only tip I can give to anyone out there who wants to be a wedding videographer. When in doubt, follow the bride. Tip number eight, audio. Audio is half of the viewing experience. Good music choice, sound effects, and clear and crisp dialogue enhances your short film and makes the video come alive and be more meaningful in an emotional way. On the other hand, a horribly captured audio can ruin an otherwise well-taken or well-shot scene. If no audio is captured at all, the video will end up feeling empty and disconnected. I've done plenty of wedding highlight films with no dialogue, just videos and a music overlay. That can work, but when you compare that to those videos that have included vows or toasts, speeches or congratulatory messages to go on top of the visuals, it can take your wedding film to a whole new level. Sentimental, heartfelt dialogues always add that extra oomph to your videos. Tip number nine, posing couples. You must always remember, they are not actors. It's their wedding. And you're supposed to be the director and the guide on how to make them look the best on their big day. That's why they hired you, right? If you're inexperienced or if it's your first few weddings, the best tip I can give you is to strike up a conversation and make them feel relaxed and comfortable in your presence. A lot of couples that I have shot are very tense throughout the day, but I mean it's the biggest day of their life, so what you can do as a professional in this line is to get them to relax and you'll be able to get some beautiful and natural laughing, smiling shots that will make your wedding feel more personable and heartfelt. Some couples may be able to do that naturally, but observe them carefully and know when or what to say. Okay, for example, I had a groom who liked to say, oh my god, in a very high-pitched tone. And when he says that, the bride always breaks out into a huge laughter. So I brought the groom to one side and I told him, okay, later at a count of three, just do what you do best to make her laugh uncontrollably and say, oh my god, in your high-pitched tone. Then bam, we nailed that shot. Posing a couple is a lot more easier than what you think. Keep practicing and soon you'll be very good at it. Ultimately, it is your job to make them look good. Hugs, kisses, cuddles, laughs, have a list in your head and try them out during the day. Get creative and make them feel comfortable and natural on camera. The last tip, tip number 10, is to be confident. There's nothing worse than a videographer who obviously has no idea what is going on throughout the day. Imagine a couple paying thousands of dollars to capture the most important day of their lives and it turns out that the videographer is lost and having no confidence in whatever he's doing. Laugh, joke, do it with confidence and direction. If you're the type of videographer who prefers a more journalistic and non-intrusive style, you don't need to be loud and grabbing attention everywhere you go. You can have the quiet confidence and go about posing the couple or giving them certain assuring directions. This is what attracts the bride to refer you to her friends who are getting married. People who see a confident videographer knows that the day is well covered and they will feel safe letting you document the biggest day of their lives. At a wedding, everyone is there to watch what you do. The more you learn, the better you get. So there you have it. 
I hope this video has given you a good idea of how to make your wedding videos look more professional and cinematic and increase the value of your production, which in turn allows you to charge a higher fee for your future wedding videos. Whether you are a new videographer trying to establish yourself in the wedding industry or a professional wedding videographer trying to pick up a few tips here and there from what I've just shared. To be honest, although I've been in this industry for about 12 years now, I'm also learning on each new job that I take up. Trying to see what other professionals are learning and how I can pick up a few tips from them to increase my workflow and production efficiency. And of course, in return, sharing my personal experiences with you guys. Before I end this video, I'd like to say it really means a lot to me if you found the information useful and if you can give this video a like. So it encourages me to continue making such videos for you. If you want to learn more about photography and videography on this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know.